Influencer marketing is a multi-billion dollar industry that only continues to grow year over year because, well, it's working. Brands love collaborating with content creators because the content that creators produce is often more relatable and less salesy than what brands can create in-house. If you are interested in getting paid by your favorite brands to create content for them, then keep watching because today we are going to talk about how to pitch yourself to brands for collaborations. back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Austin and I am a fashion and beauty content creator based in New York City. I use this channel to help micro influencers create great content, grow their digital brands, and make sustainable income from content creation. So if any of that interests you, please do consider hitting subscribe down below for new videos every Tuesday. When it comes to pitching, I have several years of experience on both sides of the coin. I started out my career as a magazine editor, and my inbox was flooded every week with hundreds of pitches from brands and publicists and other people who wanted their clients featured in our magazines. And as an influencer, I've been able to work on paid brand collaborations with companies like Walmart, Glossier, The New York Times, Amazon, and more because I was able to convince those brands that out of all of the hundreds of thousands of creators out in the world, that I was someone who could help tell their story and create amazing content that they would love. My goal with today's video is to help you take an idea that you have in your head and turn it into something tangible that a brand will want to pay you for. So I thought it would be fun to structure this video by talking you through the who, what, when, where, and why of pitching. Let's get into it. Let's start off with who should you pitch? What type of brands should you be reaching out to if you are interested in potentially collaborating with them? So these are three different types of brands that you should consider pitching. First is brands that you already use and love. So take a look around your apartment, your home, your bedroom, wherever you are at this moment, and make a note of any brands that you see that you would want to pitch. Maybe it's a home decor brand, maybe it's the lip balm on your nightstand, maybe it is the necklace that you're already wearing, and think about these brands that you actually use and love throughout your day-to-day -day life. When you think about brands you already use and love, there's also a good chance you've already created some content featuring those brands. So that will only strengthen your case if you go to pitch a new brand to show that you have been using their product before they even started paying you. The second type of brand you can think about reaching out to is brands that really align with your mission or your audience as an influencer. So I, for example, create a lot of beauty content, and there are definitely plenty of beauty brands out there that I haven't gotten a chance to try yet, but my audience does know that I love doing product reviews and trying new brands and recommending different products, and so I can still go to a brand within the beauty category, show them similar examples of content that I've created, and convince them that maybe I'm the person to help introduce their brand to my audience. So you can think about that for whatever category you create content about. And the third type of brand that you should consider pitching is brands that you already have a relationship with. And this could be a brand that maybe you are currently an affiliate for, or maybe they've sent you gifting or invited you to an event, or even still, maybe you've actually already worked with them. It is so much easier to secure a repeat client in this industry because you've already worked with them and hopefully proven your worth and shown exactly what kind of a great partner you can be to them. And it really helps tell the story through influencer marketing to work with a brand more than once because it does take a little while for a customer or a consumer to see something and then to take action on it. In marketing, we call that the rule of seven, where someone has to see something about seven times for them to actually take action. So that's a great thing that you can bring up to brands to secure repeat partnerships or partnerships across multiple platforms. So definitely think about reaching back out to your previous brand partners, seeing what they're up to, you know, giving them a little shout out on your Instagram stories to get the conversation rolling, and then see what you might be able to do together. Or you can also reach out, like I said, to brands that you've had maybe a little bit of a brushing shoulders relationship with, but that you haven't worked with yet in a paid capacity. Relationship building is hugely important in this industry, and the more that you can pitch brands that you already have some sort of touch point with, the higher chance of success I think you'll have in closing a deal. Let's move on and talk about the what. So what should you actually say when you reach out to a brand? And this is where I think a lot of creators tend to get stuck. 
Here are some of the most important things that I would outline in your pitch email. The first thing you'll want to make sure you have is a catchy subject line, something that's relevant and makes the person on the receiving end of the email actually want to open the email in the first place, especially keeping in mind that the inboxes of people who do influencer marketing for brands are probably extremely cluttered. Second, be sure to state who you are and what your relationship is to them. Obviously, if you're emailing a brand contact you've already talked to, you don't necessarily need to define this, but just to remind them a bit about you and your audience and what platforms you create on. I think you should also mention your relationship to the brand, whether it's I've been using your products for years or I tried your moisturizer last week and I'm obsessed with it. Just letting them know that you have some exposure to the brand and that you know what they create and who their customers are. Now, in your pitch, I think it's important to be as specific as possible. A lot of influencers will tell brands that they want to collaborate with them, but not elaborate on that. So maybe you'll want to say, I see that you guys have been killing it on TikTok lately. Here is my beauty hashtag on TikTok. I create a lot of similar content and I would love to do something for your brand. Or you can head to their Instagram and see that they are planning to launch a new product and say, if you want to send me this product, maybe we can work out a way for me to create some content that then you guys can share on your own channels. Being in the know about what the brand is doing and understanding what their priorities are can really give you leverage in a pitch. I think that if you can link an example and also link whatever relevant social media platform of yours that you are pitching the brand on, that will make it also easier for them to have all in one place. And before you close out the email, include a call to action. What do you want the next step to be? As an example, you could say, if you're interested in this, do you have time next week to hop on a 15 minute phone call to discuss further? Now that was a very quick overview of what the main points are that I would include in a brand pitch email. But if you're interested in getting some templates and seeing some examples of pitch emails that I've sent before, I do include some in my ebook right on pitch. I couldn't quite make this video without mentioning it. Right on pitch is my ebook and it is my complete guide to pitching. A lot of you guys have purchased it over the years and I've gotten great feedback on it. I include things in there like what makes a pitch stand out, tips for negotiating your rates when you're pitching, also things like my editor approved pitch checklist, which kind of stems from my magazine editor days, and also a word about rejection and pitching as well. So if you guys are interested, I will be sure to leave a link to that in the description box of this video. You can also go read testimonials and reviews from other people who have purchased the ebook as well. We've covered who and we've covered what, let's move on to when. Now technically you can pitch a brand at any time, but I do think there are a few different times where it makes more and less sense to pitch a brand. So let's review. Some good times to pitch a brand are right after you've organically posted content about them, sent it to them, and if they like it and give you good feedback on it, you can use that as leverage to then pitch them on another idea. If you've recently attended an event with a brand, and especially if you were able to see your brand contact face to face, that is a great time to pitch them because it will be fresh in their mind. And if they were having an event, there's a chance that they were promoting something in particular or getting a group together to look for organic social promotion. So that is another great time. Thinking about ahead of any sales or promotions going on. So to give you a few beauty examples, Tarte once a year I know does a sale where they have seven items available for $65. You can kind of build your own kit and that's something they do year and year on so you can keep track of what date they do that. You can also think about brands like Glossier. They don't really have sales very often. They have a Friends of Glossier sale which is actually happening now in May as I'm filming this video and they have a Black Friday sale. So any kind of content related to sales that you know a brand is going to have each year is also an idea for when you might be able to pitch them. And two other great times to pitch brands are ahead of the summer months and also ahead of the holiday season because those are two times of year where brands are really starting to spend and push a lot of their marketing efforts. So if you want to pitch brands for summer partnerships, I would start doing that honestly in May, which again is kind of what I'm filming in this video. And if you want to pitch brands for holiday partnerships, that starts even earlier than you think it does. So think about starting to do some initial outreach honestly at the end of August or beginning of September. 
If you've never pitched brands for the holiday season before, I do actually have a whole video specifically about pitching during the holidays. So I will be sure to link that in the description box as well in case you'd like to watch that video next. The only time I would really specifically avoid pitching brands and if anything, maybe just try to touch base with them and have a quick coffee catch up is in January because they're just coming off a big marketing spend push from the holidays most likely and January in Q1 is also when brands kind of figure out their budgets for the rest of the year. So they might still be up in the air about some of their decisions and you might not get a real answer from them at that time. Now let's move on and talk about where to pitch brands. And in my eyes, there's really only one place where you want to do this, and that is in an email. Email still is the standard for communication with brands. I've gotten a bunch of different questions over the years about pitching via Instagram DMs, and there are two main reasons why I still don't think that this is the right way to pitch someone. Number one, the person who's answering the DMs is likely on the social media team, and most brands have separate social media teams and influencer marketing teams. So you might write out a pitch via DM only to have it go to a person who can't really do anything about it. The second reason you don't want to pitch via DM is things can get lost really easily. It's not as easy to search your Instagram DMs as it is to search your inbox. So you don't want your pitch to get lost and to kind of go out into the void. You really want to make sure it's going to the right person. I do want to clarify, I think Instagram DMs are great for building a relationship with a brand, like tagging them, having them reply and you replying back, and also to ask the person who is running the Instagram account, is there an email for someone on your influencer marketing team that I can reach out to? And if they're able to answer, they will, and if they're not, at least you tried. The last thing I wanted to make sure I covered in this video is why? So why do you want to work with brands? Why do you want to pitch them on a collaboration? And I think that this is something that has changed a lot in the last few years with influencer marketing as this industry is seen as a more real job and it's taken more seriously by people is a lot of people started out content creation thinking, oh, I can get a lot of free stuff and I can go to events and do things. But it really is work and it has to be a mutually beneficial relationship. If a brand is inviting you to an event, it's probably because there's something you can be doing for the brand, like posting Instagram stories or sharing their products with your audience. And it really is a give and take. So you should take that same mentality into your pitch emails and not just ask for a collaboration because you would like a thousand dollars this month or because you think that the brand should want to work with you. You have to sell them on why you, why them, and why now. So let's break those three things down. Why you? I mean, there are so many content creators out there and while there is a big demand for content creators, there is also a big supply. So you need to be able to stand out in a competitive market and again, make it very clear in your pitch email why you're the one who can tell this brand's story, why your audience is closely aligned with their customers and make sure that you get as personal and that you show as much of your unique personality and perspective that you can. The next question is also why them? Again, have you been using this brand for years? Has a new product of theirs seriously wowed you? Have you tried a competitor and their brand and found that they were much stronger and they had a much better product? Those are all things that a brand would like to know, A, because it's just useful feedback for them, and B, because it proves an even stronger point as to why this partnership between you and the brand should happen. And I think the question of why now, you know, sometimes it is just because you love the brand, but if you can add any element of urgency or exclusivity to this brand pitch that you want to write, that can also help seal the deal. So if you are just trying to book a certain number of partnerships for the holiday season and you only have one spot left, that might convince the brand that they should work with you and they should get in and get your final advertising spot for the season. Or maybe you recently had coffee with someone from the marketing team of one of these brands and they told you that next month they're going to be releasing a reformulated product that they have had for years and you can pitch something around that idea. So it's not 100% necessary, but adding, like I said, an element of either urgency or exclusivity 
that only you can bring to the table or that only you and the brand can create together can further make them understand why this brand partnership is something that needs to happen. I hope you guys enjoyed the format of today's video. I have seen so many different types of pitching videos over the years, but I thought by addressing the who, what, when, where, and why of brand collaborations, it would give you kind of a holistic picture of how to pitch brands and what to look out for. And of course, if you want more tips and resources, again, my ebook, Right on Pitch, is definitely the place to go. I think that you guys will love it. And you can also see, like I said, the table of contents and also testimonials and reviews from other people who have purchased the book before. So I'll leave a link down in the description box. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. Go ahead and hit the red button down below underneath this video. We are getting very close to 10K, which is exciting. And don't forget, you can also turn on the notifications so you'll actually get a notification whenever I publish a new video so you never miss anything. And if this video did help you, please give me a thumbs up down below to let me know that you liked it. I'll be back again with another new video next Tuesday. Until then, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. I keep sneaking out in